Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Morning Edge webinar. And I was wondering if I can please get a sound check. Uh, if I can go in and uh, please get a sound check to see if the volume is working fine. Okay, great. Walter says sound check passes. Um, the last, uh, I'm actually on my um, iPod ear, ear set. The last 48 hours or so has been an absolute disaster with AT&T. Uh, they got my internet back up, and it actually went out this morning. Again, it was out for several hours. So I've been uh, – actually, I got up six hours ago and took my time setting everything up, started to post a chart, and then after I posted the first chart, um, the internet went back down again. And so I was actually going to do the webinar from like a Starbucks. Uh, I was actually getting ready to take off. I was disconnecting everything to use one of the laptops. And then the Internet came back on, and then I had to start everything off all over again. I have not done not one single strip of analysis. I have no idea what anything's done other than when I turned on the computer this um, when I got up at midnight because I decided, you know what, uh, the AT&T guy didn't come here till come in till late in the afternoon and I decided, you know what, that's it. I'm not going to fiddle around, I know what I'll do is I'll just get up very, very early and I'll knock it all out in one fell swoop. And like I said, everything was good for a little while until then the Internet decided to go back out again. It wouldn't come back on. So um, we're going to start completely from scratch. I'm going to have to move all my charts, move all the levels. So um, we'll just cover about the first three or four minutes of news, and it's probably going to take me all that length of time, the entire show, to do all the analysis, to be honest with you, because I'm going to do, do it from scratch and have to move everything, all the charts and all the levels over. So, um, uh, But thanks thanks for uh, your patience. I want to thank Stephen Bilby for stepping in for me yesterday, um, you know, because I was, like I said, um, had a, a big windstorm um, Sunday night into this into the day. And um, I think they said the, the winds got up to like 47 miles an hour. But anyway, it was enough to knock out electricity and kill. And when the electricity came back on, my uh, modem box or whatever was fried. But um, so we'll just take a look. Uh, I do see that the euro got to our target. We've had a target in place for the last two weeks of 7.58. It looks like it made it to that level. I did see that yesterday, and that's why I posted a chart on uh, this morning, and all of a sudden, everything, like I said, shortly after that, everything went to heck in a handbasket with the with the uh, Internet. But um, it says the dollar wallows near seven-week lows on fading Trump trade. The dollar wallowed near its lowest level since early December. On Tuesday, it kept under pressure by concerns that Trump was focusing more on protectionism and less on pro-growth economic policies. The currency had soared over 6% to 14-year highs on the eight weeks following Trump's surprise election victory in November as investors bet his promised infrastructure spending and tax cuts would boost growth and inflation, leading to a faster pace of U.S. interest rates, uh, rises, and a stronger dollar. But Trump's first news conference since winning the election and his America First inaugural speech offered scant detail of his planned fiscal stimulus and fuels concerns that Trump's protectionism could harm the U.S. economy. The fitting of the so-called Trumpflation trade has driven a 3.5% uh, fall in the dollar against the basket of major currencies. Uh, the euro, which it looked like is heading towards parity with the dollar at the end of 2016, has rebounded above 107. You know we were looking for that trade. You know, we've been talking about 107.58 for quite a while. We saw the pullback from 107.16, and uh, here we look, so we hit the 7.58. Um, let me see. Trump formally withdrew the United States from the Pacific uh, Rim Trade Pacific uh, Partnership (TPP) on Monday, distancing the United States from its Asian allies. Um, there's a lot of negative growth, negative news, and not really pro-growth positive news. So the markets are just pricing out the Trump trade a little bit, and that hurts the dollar. Says USBS, uh, UBS Global Strategy, Constantine Bolts and Zurich. Uh, if his rhetoric continues as it's done over the past last few days and weeks, the dollar could easily lose another few percent. Lower U.S. Treasury yields also undermine the dollar. The benchmark 10-year yield on Monday posted its biggest one-day drop in more than two weeks as concerns about the fallout of Trump's tough stance on trade spurred safe haven demand for bonds. And I guess we've seen the same thing in the dollar yen too. 
Uh, Trump's nominee for Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin was quoted by Bloomberg on Monday as saying that an excessively strong dollar was negative in the short term, short term, which puts additional pressure on the dollar. Also adding to the risk, investors' risk-averse mood, the Trump administration vowed on money that the United States would prevent China from taking over territory and international waters in the South China Sea, something the Chinese state media has warned would require Washington to wage war. The market is now watching and waiting with headline risk to see Trump's first days as we get greater clarity around his policies and around his cabinet. All those are likely to inject greater volatility into the market, said Su Trin, head of Asia FX strategy at Royal Bank of Canada in Hong Kong. Sterling sipped three-tenths ahead of the UK Supreme Court, but that's expected to uh, say the government needs parliamentary approval to trigger formal talks about the country's exit. So we'll... We'll take a look. I don't even know what reports are coming out today. Like I told you, my internet just came back on about 50 minutes ago. And I, like I said, I've been up for six hours. So we'll take a look. It had been on, and then the... Um, let's take a look. I have no idea what's coming today. I don't have no idea what's coming this week, because it was out all, all through Sunday. Um, so we have, um, thankfully nothing at 8.30 Eastern, so we don't have to cover any news. We do have market manufacturing PMI flash at 9.45 Eastern. Uh, tomorrow nothing. And be just a moment. Hang on one second. One more. So let's go on and um, see on the 26th. Um, trade balance, jobless claims. So really not anything. So no news for the next couple of days to speak of. As I said, today we have a market PMI flash, existing home sales, but that's not till 10 a.m. Eastern. So we're going to move into the charts. And as you know, that was our target from the last two weeks. 
we've been, you know, the overall target, which was 758 before, significant pullback. And we got our 758 yesterday. So this is the only chart I've actually started to work a little bit on. Um, for anybody coming in, um, my internet got, the AT&T guy came late yesterday afternoon, got the internet working, and I got up at midnight, only to have the internet go right back out again, and just came back on 45 minutes ago. So, um, So we'll take a look at where we're standing right now. Um, and like I said, we're going to do everything from scratch. Uh, hang on a moment. So like as I mentioned before is everything's going to be done from scratch because um, I, I haven't done anything. Like I said, I got up at, uh, actually, I'll be honest with you, I got up before midnight actually and uh, had worked on the Euro chart. I was talking to some guys and uh, posted this and uh, then summarily then the, the the internet turns around and just goes off. So I thought I was going to be doing the um, the webinar from from a uh, from a hot spot. So I'm still pretty ticked off. So we're going to be this is all going from scratch. I mean, when I say scratch, I mean scratch. I have to update all these charts. Like I said, it's going to probably going to take the better of the entire two hours to do all this analysis. It's going to be from... As a matter of fact, I had updated the Euro chart and when the uh, internet went out and had to shut everything down, I didn't even save these updates here. So be honest with you, we probably won't even finish the uh, the majors until about an hour and a half from now. That's how long it's going to be going to take. None of this stuff has been updated since last Friday, so um, like I said, it's going to take it's going to take a while.
So we got to the 758. We've been talking about that. Um, yeah, Max says, how are you doing? Are you okay? Not really, Max. Um, after having no internet over the weekend, the AT&T guy comes and shows up, fixes the internet, supposedly, in less than 15 minutes. And then the internet got, then I turn around and get up at midnight so I can be prepared with everything. And then the internet summarily goes off for the next uh, three and a half hours. Um, so not really. Um, but anyway, like I said, we've been talking about um, this 758. As an area that the market could get to, um, we talked about the 716. We thought we'd get a pullback, and that we would get a more that we would make it to 758, and we'd get a more significant pullback. Well, right now you have to take into consideration, uh, you know, how weak the dollar is. Everything's starting to turn negative uh, regarding the dollar. Uh, you saw the news story. Uh, people, are, the market's now starting to think the Trumpflation trade is you know turn going to go south because uh right or wrong the market sees uh him as being now more protectionist than pro growth and the pro growth would have been stimulative a lot of spending the uh, the bonds would then you know go on and um you know sell off and then uh, um that would you know aid the dollar going higher so um, it appears that's taken off. So so now I'm not saying you turn around and get short well, uh, at this point now because in light of the atmosphere. Remember before leading up to this, the atmosphere was uh, all about the dollar, all about the dollar. Now everybody's thinking, wow, you know what? Uh, this is all protectionist talk. This isn't good. We're going to have to end up going lower in the dollar. So uh, it doesn't mean you have to short it right now. I think that at this point, I was telling the guys, I think we'll get a we'll get a stall here. Uh, what could happen is depending on on any further rhetoric. You know, we talked about that they were going to be complaining about a strong dollar. So you already saw that the Treasury Secretary was saying um, uh, Mnuchin, I think that's how you pronounce his name, was saying uh, it's too strong. It's it's not good. Um, so that could open the door for us to go higher. And we had talked about it. We thought that before the move was said and done, we could eventually come up to this level, okay, take out the prior 865. Um, so we got our level here. This is our zone here. We, got, we hit our target, 758. That was our target. So um, we have to look at where's resistance right now. Well, I think resistance is going to come here at 816. So we have to look at that so we can mark that off. I mean, this is an area where I expect the market to stall and have some trouble. You could push above it and then turn around and start to slide right below it. Uh, but if you're looking for actual resist resistance, we have to go with 816, so we'll mark that off. There's our 715. That was pretty doggone good. So we'll take a look here. Obviously, this thing is bullish. And as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing everything from scratch today. I mean, I haven't, like I said, had no internet. Um, and I usually do my analysis now on, on Sunday, so I had no, uh, no internet. And then, uh, you know, then yesterday, then this happens. Um, they get it fixed and have the dog gone if the thing didn't go out. So let's take a look. Um, I remember one time Blake's webinar was out. I mean, his internet was out for a few days because some lady uh, uh, had an accident, drove her van over the I guess his internet box or whatever it was, and I remember him being out for about, I think it was three days, or like two and a half days. It was quite a while. Uh, but now I know how frustrating it must have been. Um, so now, like, where would we, we find support? Well, initially we got to 716, 
But I think you'd have to go, support would come in right here. Just below seven. And we'd have to move that a little bit lower anyway, so. Do have some, this is some good volume here. Let's say right, almost like to see a little bit lower, like right there. So we'll call that support. So support's going to come in at 686. Now, I'll still stay by this thing that, you know, that, that, that we got our target here. I think the market can still pop up back here depending on how the news comes out and what the, the rhetoric is and all that other jazz, but I still expect the market to stall in this general area. So I could, I could see the market do something like this. Maybe make another high, but just a marginal high before we then see a more sustained correction that we were talking about. And that'd probably take us to 686 for starters. But I don't think there's any rush to fade it at this point. Let them do some more work up here. But this is an area I would expect to stall, but of course right now, right now the sentiment is turning very negative the dollar. So that's where we stand here. We're going to take a look at it at 30 minutes. As I mentioned, uh, I have not updated any of these charts. Um, got up about, as I mentioned, um, got up about six hours ago, and I'll be doggone if the internet doesn't go out again. And, it's been, and it just came up about 45 minutes ago. So once again, it's going to take a while. We're going to start. We're starting from plain old scratch. So just start updating everything, moving all the charts, the levels. And that's how we make the sausage here. I'd hope to have all this done for y'all before I even came on. I was going to even have the bias chart and everything done, but you said sorry, all AT and T.
So we'll take a look at it here on the 30 minute. And as I mentioned, you know, we'd already got to our 758. Um, got 818 here. And we've got 816 as a resistance. As I mentioned, the the um, the sentiment is really starting to turn bearish a dollar. Um, we can make, I believe, you know, you could. There's a potential you could make a marginal high, very slight marginal high, and then we can start to work lower. Because, like I said, we got to our 758. There's a 758. We're looking for a more significant retracement once we got to 758. Well. You know things are you know things change so now people are getting very bearish a dollar. Um, I would allow this to make one more. See what it does. I, you'd have, I think you have to get a, an outright reversal here, but I think you can make they'll probably get lull some people to sleep and maybe get one more pop up into the 780 here, and then we can see the market with a more significant correction from there. So we'll go back into the two-hour charts. We'll move into the cable. We'll see what's happening there. We heard the news about the Article 50 and the ruling. Um, so we're just going to look at the charts to see. So we had 22 and 2400. Looks like we did even make a run up to 25. Uh, there's that 38% we talked about. Remember we had that before support and it really held up nicely and then we made that run up here to 125. Right there. And that is... See how it stands on a fib. It's twenty six oh three.
So we're back here to the support here. Well, not actually, the support was lower. This twenty two forty six. So for right now. I like this area right here because that finds that support. So I'm going to put the support here at, see right there, And resistance is going to come in at um, 2513. You can see, I'll show you right here. Right there, that low area here, that close, 2514. So put that as resistance. Okay, so we'll move on to the Aussie dollar. And I just knocked off all my stuff. And put those back on. I think there was one. Other. Oh, yeah, there was. Okay, hang on. Just get this over here. So we did go on and continue to work higher here on the uh, Aussie dollar. Let's move these over here. And we talked about this market wanting to continue to trend. Although we've stretched quite a ways here, uh, to me it looks like it's it's ready for a little bit of a respite here. Resistance is going to be here at this 7630. We'll take a look at that a little bit closer. You see right there, 7630. So let's go and mark that off here on the bias chart. And support. It's a little bit low, so I'm 
on the better pullback, I have to say, right, you see all these touches right here? That's where I would look for support there. Because um, we can see a nice little pullback. So immediate support is going to come in at 74.79. Now we'll go into the Kiwi. Let me just try something else here. Okay, I want to put everything back to where it was. Um, And we said we take a look at the Kiwi. And we had uh, 70.53 and 72 and a quarter. Here's that 72 and a quarter. And they did make it look. They made it here to the 61%. So we'll move this over here. Once again, I think we're... we're we're pretty stretched on this thing right now. You see here we made it to the 61% and um, I wouldn't necessarily call that a shooting star, but this looks more, I mean, the wick's a little bit long here, but almost like a gravestone doji. So we're stretched here. So we'll go, we'll go in and put here resistance at that 61%, 72.48. And they did make it up here to 72.60, but uh, <clears throat> I think anybody's going to try and take Try and start to ease off of that. That seventy-two forty-eight should be one more. Call it seventy-two fifty. Even though it got above it, it's going to be struggling here at this point. And this has been actually bullish short-term basis. And support, let's look for the support. So we got up here to the bias pivot, and you can see here they're really having some trouble struggling here at the 61% of the move. And it's been one heck of a move. So support, and I'm looking for more of a pullback, it's probably going to come right in here in the 7140 area here. Uh, let's stretch it out a little bit further because that's still relatively close. So we'll put, you see right here, and that's coinciding here. So we'll drop that. Right there. Seventy one twenty three. So they'll mark that for immediate support on the potential pullback. But you can see we've come quite a ways, and we're struggling here with the 61%. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, the dollar, once again, is is being viewed, uh, you know, negatively speaking. But then again, with Trump's protections views, that's probably going to look to impact China's 
uh, the way the market would look at it, which would be somewhat bearish for the Kiwi, or I would say would limit its advances going forward. So probably a decent area right here. Just put in some bonds. Um, so 71.23 for support, 72.50 on the resistance. And let's move in here into the dollar CAD. On the dollar CAD, remember we had that big move and we can't look like we made it right here to the top of this zone here, this 3388. Um, and our resistance was at 34. I thought, I remember talking about that. I thought they might be able to, which they've done before, get above the 34, around 07, you see them lay them off. Uh, but they, they ran out of gas at this 3388. Um, and support we had marked off at 3256. Actually, even I overshot that. So, We'll just stick to what we have here in the zone, which is 32.18, which is where they came down to the bottom of the zone and they actually ran out of gas at the top of the zone. So hang on. And for now, I really don't see anything different. I mean, here's that area we thought we'd pop up to. Um, this is more of a testament about what's going on with Canada than anything else. For right now, on the short term basis, right here, you have to see this line here. We'll move that here. It's got to be right there. There's your resistance. Doesn't mean we can't go up here and make a new high, but that's that's where you'd see people start to, you know, either lay off some or try and tack the market. And it's 33.56, and we'll stay with this 32. Um, Let's see, 3190 and 3356. So let's go and move in here into the dollar Swiss. And we've been looking for this. Um, let's see where our levels were. Ninety nine, ninety three. So we we got past that. I mean, well, yesterday we we broke them down here towards this ninety nine fifty eight here. And ninety nine forty six is a fifty percent.
So let's say, take a look at where we are right now on this thing. Some pretty key support at this 99.58, but remember with the dollar looking like it potentially could drop a little bit more. Um, this 99.46 with the 50%, and you see right in here in this little area here, let's take a look at this. Right there, we'd expect to see some decent low demand. That would come in at still a ways off 99.15. I don't know if we break that far, although um, let's make it a little bit higher here. Ninety-nine thirty. So if we get a marginal new high in the euro, that could push this down to ninety-nine thirty. We have ninety-nine forty-six to fifty percent. So let's mark this as ninety-nine thirty for support. And let's take a look at resistance. Obviously, this thing is you know, in pretty deep. Pretty difficult way. It's going to be the 0061 right here. That's going to be the resistance. So we're going to take our break um, now, take about a 10 minute break because we didn't even take a break the first half hour. And um, so thanks for joining us here on the uh, Morning Edge, and we'll be back uh, shortly. Thanks a lot.